Hey everyone, it is Pac from Horse Racing Discord and Horse Racing Reddit. I uh, did a video a couple days ago about how I handicap a race, things that I'm looking at, and I had a bunch of people come back and say, well, they'd really like an entry level look at the handicapping products that I'm using. So here's that. Um, the product I'm using today is called DRF Formulator. It's their premier product. It uses Bayer Speed Figures, um, which are the speed figures I prefer. And it uh, has a lot of information. If you go through this thing, you'll notice that all of the blue items here are all clickable. So you can get a lot, do a lot of real deep dive into statistics, um, look at trainer stats, jockey stats, look at the previous race really easily. Um, it has a lot of really, really cool features like that. Um, but first off, I want to start out with some of the more simplistic things. Um, Oh yeah, and this product is $4.50 for a card for an entire day. That means that you get all the races at Saratoga for the day for $4.50. You can buy them in packs and save a little bit of money. Um, and I think it's well worth it for the value proposition. This is how I sort of do all my first pass handicapping. So the, the race I'm looking at today is at Saratoga on August 15th. It's the fifth race. And again, Saratoga, it's a seven furlong race. Here's the track record at seven furlongs, and it's a maiden $50,000 claiming race. And you'll see the 50 hyphen 45, I'll explain that in a second. Um, a maiden race is a race for horses that have never won a race before. And this is what's referred to as a maiden claiming race. So you'll see a $50,000 number on all of these horses. I think they're all in for a tag of 50. Uh, 50 a claim is also referred to as a tag. Um, the 50 hyphen 40, well, I'll explain as I get to it. Uh, let me keep running through here. The purse is $52,000, up to a $9,048 bonus for New York State bred um, horses. It's for maidens, so ones have never won a race, and three year olds and upwards. Now, what a claiming race is means that after or if before the race you're interested in one of these horses, you go to the, the race steward with an envelope with a check for $50,000 in it. After the race, if you're the only person interested in that horse, the $50,000 goes to the previous owners and you take the horse back to your barn with you. It's now your horse. Um, assuming that more than one person is interested in a horse, at the end of the race, the um, there would be a shake. They would effect effectively roll a die for a chance and whoever wins the dice roll gets the horse. So that 5045 thing comes into, into effect here. Um, the race is for three-year-olds and upwards, and they would have 120 pounds. You would have 125 pounds for older horses. And the claiming price is $50,000, but if you're interested in running for two pounds less, it would be a $45,000 claim. So it's, a, it's an allowance race, effectively. Um, and then 1.5% aftercare assessment is due at the time of the claim. So actually, if you're interested in one of these horses, you have to pay a little more than that $50,000 tag. Naira started that uh, a couple, well, probably a year or so ago uh, to fund that a thoroughbred aftercare, which is a really cool thing. Um, so let's go down through and we'll take a look. Uh, so you have the seven furlong race in the upper right-hand corner here. And then you're going to have each individual horses, uh, and well, actually a couple more things before I scroll down. Uh, you're gonna see here are all the wager types that start in this race. And you're gonna have this buyer par fig of 81. That means that horses in this race would have to run about an 81 buyer on average, um, historically, to win this race. It's a rough indicator of how fast a horse would have to run, and it's a, it's a nice way and it can kind of help with your handicapping a little bit. So I want to scroll down here a little bit, and because there's a couple of horses in here that I find pretty interesting on a number of um, number of things, I can show everybody sort of a lot of things here. Uh, so I'm going to look at this horse, the number five, this uh, uh, Anthony Dutro horse. I always want to say Dickie Dutro um, horse uh, by the name of Sneakiness. So you're going to have the name Sneakiness here. It's going to be the five horse on on the form, so it'll have the number five on its side. The number five is always green. Um, all US tracks run identical silks unless they have some special promo going on. So it makes it pretty easy to see things, uh, to figure out which, horses, uh, which horse when you start switching between tracks really quickly. Um, the owner is West Point Thoroughbreds. Their colors are gold, black star, black sleeves with gold. And they're very, very common silks. You see West Point all over the place, especially in the Naira world. 
Joel Rosario is the jock today. He's um, had 135 starts in the past year at Saratoga, 18 wins, 17 seconds, 27 thirds, and that's a 13% win rate. Uh, for all of 2019, he's had 664 starts and 133 wins for a 20% win rate. It's pretty common at Saratoga for jocks to have a lower win rate than they do other places. Extremely competitive jockey field, jockey county, and also an extremely competitive fields, large, very competitive fields. Underneath this, you're gonna see the Timeform US Pace Figs. Those are a good way of trying to understand how the race is going to shape out, who's going to be on the lead, who's going to be coming late, all those kind of things. Um, it's a little more in depth, I'll probably do a video on those at some point, but uh, they're included in Formulator and I, I find them absolutely invaluable. I, I use them a ton when I'm handicapping. So information on the horse up here. This is a brown gelding who was born July 12th of 2019, um, three years old. And he was uh, sold in April, or he was sold at the Keeneland September 2017 sale for two hundred and fifty-five thousand um, dollars. Or I'm sorry, I said that wrong. My bad. I apologize. He's a bay gelding. He was gelded on July 12th of 2019. Um, he was an April full. I, I apologize. That was um, me misspeaking. Um, his sire is. Into Mischief, who's out of Harlan's Holiday and sells for $150,000, or sorry, yeah, is stands for $150,000. Um, the dam is Maria's Rose, who's out of Swiss Yodler. Um, breeder is Summer Mayberry, who's out of Florida, and the trainer is Anthony Dutro. Um, Anthony doesn't have a win on the meet yet. He's uh, so he's had four starts, zero wins, a second, zero thirds. Um, in 2019, he only has 28 starters, uh, two wins for a 7% win rate. Um, Anthony Dutra used to be a very big trainer. He's very much shrunk his stables over the years. So he's a name that everybody knows, but nowadays he's very much a shell of what he was, say, 10 years ago. So information on this horse, blinkers come off. Horse did have blinks for the last two starts. Um, you're going to see this G with a circle around it as I was well, I was getting screwed up about the gelding date. Horse is a fresh gelding. Horse was gelded on July 12th, uh, so a little over a month ago. Um, gelding is the ultimate equipment change for a male horse. It means he was snipped. Um, so gelding does a couple of things. A lot of times it'll make a horse train better in the morning. They'll be not thinking as much about other things and they'll be a little bit more focused on their running. Uh, gelding also for a horse will sometimes improve their action. A lot of times the boys get in the way and they're, they're not moving as smoothly as they could be. And uh, being gelded will make that horse run better, uh, will make them have a better action. Horse is running on Lasix, as I think about every horse in this race is. And you'll see the L there. If you look up above this horse, this uh, the next one up. Um, I don't have the name, let me get the name here. Uh, let me see if I can get everything in here. There we go. Majestic West is the four horse. You'll see the four horse has an L with a circle. L with a circle means that that horse is first time Lasix. Obviously, this is a this is a first time starter, so first time Lasix makes sense. Um, and you can then go down, sort of. Well, let's let's keep going to the right here. So lifetime for this horse. This horse has had four starts as a maiden. Um, has never won, never been second, has been twice, has been third twice. Um, the career earnings are $24,675 and the career best buyer is a 76. Um, you'll be able to see down here for each year, same numbers, and you'll be seeing in 2018, career best was a 66 and then did a 76 in 2019. Um, Horse has never run at Saratoga, so no Saratoga information. And then you'll be able to over on the right here, let me move this out of the way. You'll go to the right to see stats for on fast dirt, on wet dirt, synthetic, never no starts, um, on turf, and at this distance. So a bunch of stats are in there. You can and you can look at again those the, the best fig at those stats and at those distances, which is interesting. Um, you get a lot of times claiming horses or horses that have run a lot. Really quickly, you can kind of evaluate a horse. Gee, does he do well at this distance? Does he do well at this track? Um, kind of a nice quick overview. You'll see that as we go down below here, you'll see the last time the horse ran was the 11th of July at Saratoga. Um, was on firm turf, a five and a half furlong turf race. 
you're going to see the individual calls. So a 22 second first quarter, um, they looks like they missed the last calls. I think that's because at five and a half at Saratoga, you don't have middle calls. You just have a finishing time. Uh, I think that it's because the calls can be really inconsistent there. So there's finishing time. Um, so the race was a race, a maiden special weight at, for $90,000 for three year olds and up. Or th sorry, um, yeah, for three year olds and up. So this horse this time is getting a massive class drop coming out of um, a maiden 90, coming into a maiden claiming 50. That's the biggest class drop in racing. Um, you're gonna see the buyer speed fix and then a whole bunch of information about the last race. So Joel Rosario was the, the jock who was up. The horse started out of the three path of a nine horse field, um, was third by two lengths, was fifth by two and a half, then fifth by sixth and seventh by sixth. Uh, you're gonna see over here, horse ran with Lasix at 119 pounds with blinkers. The odds, the horse went also four and a half to one. Uh, the race rating. So this is a way of looking, uh, it's sort of an old school way of looking at a race. So sort of the best horse and the worst horse, what they ran as far as figs are concerned. Uh, then you'll have the horses that went first, second, and third. And then you'll have a little descriptor about this horse. So let me move this out of the way. You're gonna see chased um, three and then two wide and weakened. So of course could have weakened because of the really wide trip. Um, could have also weakened the, uh, the Sayoff horse uh, is actually come back to be a real monster. Um, Fix came back huge on that race. So it could just be that Ren burst a lot better competition and just isn't quite up to snuff there and is dropping down to a more appropriate class. Very well could be the, uh, could be the feeling here. Also the horse didn't run as well on turf as it had previously on a couple of dirt races. Could be the horse just likes dirt better. Um, so a lot of information you can get here. Now, down below, you're gonna see trainer stats. And I think I'm gonna actually jump up to the horse above this Joe Sharp horse to go through trainer stats because Dickie Dutcher doesn't have enough sample size to really make it. You're talking a sample size of two, really hard to make any good um, assumptions out of that. So if we look up at this Majestic West horse, the Joe Sharp horse, the four, you're gonna notice Joe Sharp is 13% with first timers, which is okay. It's not, you know, anything above 10 is decent. When you get guys that are up around 20, those guys are really good guys. The thing that's really interesting about this four horse is you're getting Joe Sharp debuting at a maiden claim hits at 21%. That's a phenomenally good statistic. Um, it's a real big number. And I would, I would feel I need to use that four just because of that. Um, and then you can see his other stats, his stats on dirt and the sample sizes. Always pay attention with these stats because sometimes you'll get those like, like the stick judge or one. Well, maiden special weight to maiden claiming, he's 0%. Well, yeah, but there's, it's a sample size of two. That's, that's not a big enough sample size to make draw any assumptions here. Now, other some, the things you could draw an assumption was 31 to 60 day layoff, uh, Dickie Dutcher is only 5%. That's pretty terrible, but it's consistent with his win numbers. So I wouldn't really move the horse up or down on that statistic um, because they're all kind of consistent with what his win numbers are. Now, where you, where you like to use these stats for is if you see somebody who, let's say they're a 5% trainer, but going, you know, well, I'm, I can even use Joe Sharp. Joe Sharp's a perfect example. Joe Sharp was a 12% trainer at Saratoga, a 19% trainer the rest of the year, but debut maiden claiming, he's 21%. So he's better at debut maiden claiming than his regular stats. It would be a reason to move that horse up on the fact that it is debuting maiden claim for Joe Sharp. Uh, so some of the other features you get into with DRS Formulator. Um, I like this one, and I, I apologize, the video is probably not gonna show up well. If I click on this, the 11th race, um, I can see that race with Saf, with JJ up, um, who was, is, you know, that thing came back real big, but you can also see Saf over here was very well bet, but probably very well meant. So as we scroll down, we get down here and we can watch a video replay. So when we watch a video replay, I'll, I'll pull up here and start, you can actually see the horses that we we're talking about here. Uh, Sneakies is the three horse. I'm waiting for the video to load. Here they are loading. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on the, uh, on the YouTube video, but you can actually sit here and you can watch the previous race and see, gee, did something happen at the start? Did Sneaky Ness not break well? He did break really well. He's right up here in the lead. I'm gonna pause it because I don't think the video is gonna play that well. 
but uh, it allows you to very quickly, if you have a lot of horses coming out of the same race, it's very easy to evaluate that race. Um, and it's also very um, easy to, gee, if you note something in the notes like bump gate, well, did they just barely bump the gate or did they really slam into the gate? Um, so I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Let me get one I can see here. Um, let's get a decent trainer. I'm gonna uh, let's let's pick this Kieran McLaughlin trainer here, because uh, Kieran is kind of a big name in, in racing. So everybody can see that. If I so within D Formulator, I can click on Kieran McLaughlin's name, and what I'll do, what it'll do is it'll bring me this sheet. This is every Kieran McLaughlin starter in the past. Uh, this will be go back three years. So it's pretty cool. You can actually see, see that he's had 322 horses start. Um, or sorry, 322 horses with 1,857 starts, 361 wins, 922 times in the money, 19% win percentage, in the money 50% of the time. If you bet every one of his horses to win, you'd return a dollar and sixty-three, two dollar win. You'd, be, you'd get a dollar and sixty-three cents back. Median payoff is six point two, six dollars and twenty cents, meaning he's a well-supported trainer in general. The neat thing about DRF is the fact that you can click modify filters. So let's say I want to know what are Kieran McLaughlin's stats um, using. Oh, let's use today's track, which would be Saratoga. We're going to use today's jock, which is Dylan Davis. And I want to know what his stats are using Dylan Davis at a sprint, so a race less than a mile. I'm going to click OK. And I'll see that there are three horses, four starts, zero wins, zero times in the money, 0% win percentage. So more than, and I guess it's a sample size of four. It's hard to draw any real concrete conclusions there. But more than likely, Dylan Davis is not a go-to rider um, here for Kieran McLaughlin in these types of races. You can do some real deep dive which with Formulator, which is pretty slick. Uh, a lot of times you can find some really good nuggets in there, some really interesting statistics. Uh, the one that I remember from some of the guys on Discord that we kind of dug out a while ago was Chad or uh, Todd Pletcher shipping to California for stakes races, and it's a terrible statistic. He was horrible at it, which is weird because Todd is normally pretty good at almost everything. So, um, so other cool things with Formator, as you can see, I don't have morning line odds turns on. When I handicap, I don't use them. I don't like them. If I go up to filters and past performances, I can come down here, I can click on morning line odds, click save, and all of a sudden morning line odds for all of these individual horses pop up so you can see them. Um, other cool things, I can go in here and I can do something like, I can turn on Timeform US figure line, pace figure line. What this will actually do, and hopefully this shows up well, uh, let me find one where I have, oh, there we go, let's use Fireball John on the two. Um, I can see here all these numbers underneath. We were talking about those pace numbers. Well, these are pace numbers at each individual call of the race for this horse. So you can see the red numbers are a red hot pace. That means that in this two back race, they were flying early and the black is sort of normal. The blue numbers are cooler numbers. They mean that that was a little slower pace, relatively speaking. Uh, and you can see those figs for uh, this is for the leader of the race over here on the left, and this is for Fireball John over on the right. So you can see, let's say this two back race, uh, the leader did a 134, but he still was doing a 123. So he was flying, maybe got caught up in a pace duel and fell apart late. Um, where you can see they were going pretty quick here early in the last race, but he wasn't going nearly as quick, so maybe he didn't get a pace set up. You can, you can play those types of games and do some deep dive analytic, really kind of filter out what you want to see. Um, you can, and in, within Formulator, you can turn a lot of different things on or off. Things you want to see, things you don't want to see. If you want to streamline it down to have a, a you know, a, where each race is on one page and it's like a, a, the last three races and it's a real simple format to bring to the track with you, and you want to write your notes on that, you can do those types of things as well. So, a lot of things you can do with Formulator. Um, when I'm at, at the track, um, I, I frequent Saratoga a lot. Uh, I uh, I have my laptop, I have this up, and it allows me, gee, that horse that just walked by looks really good. Let me dig a little deeper. Is there something I missed? Is there a statistic that I, I, I'm not seeing? Um, I'm a big numbers guy, so I, I enjoy the statistics side of it. So uh, I think that's it for today. That's a pretty good walkthrough of DRF Formulator. 
hop on um, either Discord uh, and, and ask any questions. Um, I'm always on there. There's a number of admins and a number of extremely good handicappers. We can help you walk through the form. What are you seeing? What are you missing? Uh, any questions you may have, other things that you may see. Uh, you know, there's always some weird annotation that somebody's always asking, geez, why is this listed this way? Well, here's the reason it's listed that way. Uh, but. Uh